Hi, so we recently had an Earth Day here on planet Earth, and everywhere on the internet I saw stories like we have 12 years to fix what we're doing to the Earth before we all die, or we are killing half of everything on the planet, and I thought to myself, that is a really good way to both scare and guilt internet users at the same time. But there should be more out there, on a day like Earth Day at least, on what we as a society can do to kind of bring ourselves out of this global warming hole we've dug for ourselves. So. Will this technology help move our species away from the brink of destruction, or are we going to have to Hunger Games this piece for the next, like, couple hundred years? I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Just kidding. And I'm really not trying to scare anyone here or imply that it's anyone's fault. We know whose fault it is. Industry leaders, politicians, llamas, f***ing llamas. So first, let's analyze our problem. So here's a pie chart for the U.S.'s energy consumption in 2017. These non-renewable energy sources take up 80% of the entire pie chart. Now, as many of you may know, these fuels that we are using are hydrocarbon-based fuels, which release CO2 when they are burned. There is no way of getting around this. This CO2 that we are releasing into the atmosphere is really good at absorbing and re-emitting infrared light. Let me illustrate what I'm talking about here. One sec. All right, so the sun emits all kind of light down to Earth, short wave, long wave, and the surface, once it warms up, emits long wave radiation back out into the atmosphere. This is known as infrared light, and you might have heard of it from like infrared cameras where you can see people's thermal images. So with all this extra CO2 in the atmosphere, what it does is it absorbs it, vibrates a little, and then emits it back out into the atmosphere. I mean, as you can imagine, having a bunch of CO2 molecules and other greenhouse gases like water and O3, which is ozone, in the lower atmosphere, just absorbing and re-emitting this infrared radiation, it'll definitely heat up the lower atmosphere because all of these molecules are now vibrating very quickly next to one another and it's gonna heat up. So if you have an IQ above five, you might be wondering, why are we still using this fuel if it is so unsafe and harmful to our planet? Well, first of all, I know, right? What an astute observation. So one option we have as a society, and I think a lot of people overlook, is to hire a bunch of mercenaries and finally take care of our little llama problem. You no, know, our very promising prospect for energy consumption is nuclear fusion. So in order for nuclear fusion to take place, we're gonna need a couple things. We're gonna need heat, the right elements, and pressure. So we need heat to break all of the atoms that are in the chamber down to plasma, which is just an excited form of gas. Things are so chaotic that electrons can't hold on to their nuclei. So in terms of elements, most researchers are using deuterium and tritium, which are just isotopes of hydrogen. Deuterium is basically hydrogen with an extra neutron. Tritium is just hydrogen with two extra neutrons. So the last thing that we need is pressure. In order to get these extremely energetic particles to slam into each other and fuse, we need to get them in a very confined space so it increases their chances. So if deuterium and tritium atoms are lucky enough to hit each other head on, once they are 10 to the negative 15 meters away from one another, then the strong nuclear force tells the electromagnetic force, I will, I will have this now, thank you. And the two nuclei fuse, releasing 17.6 mega electron volts of energy, as well as helium-4 and one neutron. There are these lithium blankets outside the reaction chamber itself that, number one, they absorb all the incoming neutrons, and turn that back into more tritium that they can use for later. It also heats up surrounding water, which then goes through a heat exchanger, which creates steam, and then goes through a turbine generator. So you may have heard of this. The ITER, based in France, is working on their Tamaka, Takamak, Tacomic model, which they're saying is going to be ready by around 2025, is estimated to produce around 500 megawatts of power. That's crazy, but there's a ton of research being done around this right now. You should definitely look into it. It's pretty interesting stuff. So let's go over some pros and cons. So we know that there are going to be no carbon emissions, which is amazing. Uh, the only thing that this gives off is helium-4, and that is an inert gas. The fuels that are needed for this reaction to occur are abundant. I mean, tritium comes from lithium, and lithium is widely available in the Earth's crust, and deuterium can be found from water, so technically we could use this form of energy for millions of years. They are safe, which is extremely important, 
there's no risk of having some nuclear power plant meltdown that decimates cities because there is no risk of having some runaway fission reaction. Also, there is no radioactive waste. Radioactive waste is extremely toxic. The U.S. has been trying to deal with it for a really long time now. Their best option is to bury it underground. With this, there is no need for that. And this is a very new technology. With all innovations, the efficiency, the practicality, and reliability usually increases over time. So let's go over some of the cons. So estimates are saying that this technology will be available in 2050, which is 30 years away. Also, this technology is extremely expensive. I mean, we're trying to recreate conditions that were previously only seen inside the sun. The conditions have to be very carefully engineered for this thing to be useful to us. And I'm sure you guys will give me more cons in the comments. <laughs> Um, besides that, I really can't think of anything else. I guess that is the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.